Where do people live in South America? For the most part, we see this pattern when we look at the continent in terms of the uh, and compass. We see a ring around the continent in terms of population density. And so that's for the most part what we see here. In the interior areas, uh, we're not going to see as much of a population clustered. Further, we're also going to see patterns related to the physical environment. Obviously, people don't like living in a very, very, very dry, cold, uh, or hot desert. Uh, but they also don't like living in a place where it's too hot and too darn wet, like the Amazon lowlands. Uh, but let's begin with Brazil. Uh, so Brazil, along the outer edge, we see the country in which the population is essentially densely populated in these, in these urban areas all along the coast. Uh, so this goes throughout much of the Brazilian highlands and the coastal areas. Uh, in particular, you see a little, a really dense population in the southern part of Brazil, where you have Rio de Janeiro, uh, Sao Paulo. And this is one of the challenges in Brazil, is you have a very dense population that's spread out along a linear coast. Uh, and so networking uh, in terms of in terms of transportation, infrastructure, connecting all those various cities with the core, which is definitely there in more the southern part uh, of, of Brazil. Uh, we look out into the interior of Brazil, very sparsely populated. So you go away from the Brazilian highlands, you go away from the coastal part of Brazil, uh, population definitely gets more sparse. Uh, but we do see a little bit of a population cluster there in what we call the Cerrada, C-E-R-R-A-D-O. I'm probably pronouncing it wrong, but that's okay, I'm a Hoosier. So this is a tropical savanna area, kind of that transition from the Brazilian highlands to the Amazon lowlands and the rainforest. And so we have this tropical savanna area, which makes sense because we talked about the physical geography section, how we have a dry period and then a wet period, very similar to what we saw in Sub-Saharan Africa. And so what that means is this is an area where you're going to find some agricultural opportunities. However, there's a lot of destruction happening here, just like we saw in deforestation of the tropical rainforest. There's also, in terms of the change, environmental change, converting grasslands to agricultural areas, especially as population grows, not only in Brazil, but also in South America, but also in this particular area, uh, this, this Cerrado area. We next go down to the Pampas. The Pampas is this kind of the southern cone, cone a part of, of South America, includes Uruguay, a little bit of Brazil, uh, but also Argentina. Very important. Uh, this particular area, uh, in terms of it being a very densely populated area, but we see one important city, Buenos Aires. And the port to Buenos Aires is very important for the economy, but also explains why we see a large population here. Not only because we see agricultural opportunities here, uh, because this is the one area of South America where agriculture is actually pretty good, uh, but also in terms of moving that, uh, those agricultural products, but also all the good resources in the interior of Argentina out. Uh, so that also explains why we have other types of, uh, of, of jobs here in sectors. We have manufacturing, distributing, uh, tertiary sectors. That's one of the reasons why Argentina has a very robust economy. Now I'll go over to Chile, Chi 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 Le Le Le. Uh, so Chi, uh, Chile has a very dense population there, right in the center of the country, which can, because of it being a very elongated country, can have some connectivity issues, especially for those lightly populated there in the Atacama Desert uh, to the north, but also there to the south, uh, where it definitely gets a little cooler. We now move over to Peru um, and Ecuador, once again, very densely populated there along the coast. And so this is a very, very similar pattern we find uh, along the Andes Mountains. This is a very thin area uh, in which people uh, are densely populated. Then we have the Andes Mountains, and then on the other side, we have the Amazon Lowlands. And so the Andes Mountains and the Amazon Lowlands are very lightly populated, whereas the uh, the uh, the very thin, very dry coast uh, is is very densely populated. We're also going to find uh, the core of those countries. Uh, so this can lead to some, you know, some inequalities. And so you have the core of the population on one side of the mountains, and so you have the people who live up in the mountains and the people on the other side of the mountains who are often neglected. Uh, you get up to the northern part uh, of South America, very tropical, very, very hot. And so here you actually see the dense populations uh, live a little bit out of a higher elevation to kind of 
get a little bit of coolness uh, from that very hot tropical muggy conditions you find in uh, this uh, tropical equatorial part of South America. Uh, finally, we get to the Guyana Highlands, and this is going to be uh, a little bit lightly populated here, very tropical, uh, but also not a lot of reasons for people to move here. It's not like Argentina, where they have a robust economy and all these types of jobs, and over time, a population core developing. They have those, but they're very much smaller and focusing on those particular countries, Suriname or Guyana in terms of where you find the dense population core, not as big or vast as you find in other parts of the continent. Finally, I didn't mention it, but the Patagonia area, very clearly you can see it right through here, this particular western part of Argentina, very dry. Uh, you know, not in an area that's going to be conducive to agriculture, not a lot of rivers flowing through it. You're going to see a lot more like the Great Plains, like, like if you've ever been to eastern Colorado or Nebraska, very dry, very sparsely populated, some agriculture, but a lot more kind of grazing uh, and, and herding, those types of activities, along with a good amount of mining, tons of good resources uh, there in Argentina.